Well, guys, uh, I hate to say it, but there's another pack car sitting there. It just needs uh, the scan tool hooked to it, and it's got thermostats or something stuck open. The engine won't warm up. I got some thermostats over here. So, this pack car thing is turning into an absolute nightmare. I don't know what's, I don't know what to make of, you know, I get in different, I don't know. You get in different stories from different people, and there's a lot of people mixed up in this thing now, and people like me were caught in the middle on this thing, and anyway, I'm looking for, what am I looking for? Oh, the thermostats and the gaskets that I got for it. Uh, basically, you know, the dealer, uh, Pappy, you know, they're wanting to take care of it and and get something going but the owner's not very happy with the whole thing and he don't trust another short block he just don't want to go down that route and but so he found he called see these guys are from down south so he called the peter bit dealer in santa rosa and they said that they could get him a new engine and a brand new engine for fifty nine thousand dollars and stick in that truck you know he's gonna must have 200 grand into this truck and uh so the problem with that whole situation is that you know the guy that tom the guy that the salesman up here he's on vacation so i've had this core ready to go you know and the, the zoner head core all this stuff is ready to go back but if he buys the brand new engine from santa rosa that's a different dealer down there I think that's Coast County's Peterbilt. But um, if you buy it down there, uh, you got to have a core. They want a core for the new engine. So you got to turn this one in for the original engine, the crank that's broke. And then the other one that's sitting out there in the truck, they're going to want it back. So you don't really have a core. And the core for the new engine is 12000 The core on this is 3000 And I told him, I said, well, I don't know what to tell you. I said... Uh, about the best I can tell you of to, is maybe to eat, just to eat the 3000 on this core charge and take this one down there. They're not going to give you a 12000 because you're not turning into a complete engine. I don't know what to do here. I mean, I'm, I told him, I said, they can, they'll warranty the short block and send that to you. I mean, that's, I, that's a better result than I really expected to happen on this thing. Cause I remember when we dealt with John Deere on this, it was, a, it was a disaster. You know, if it wouldn't have been for the YouTube video of that thing blowing up while I was driving it, I think that they probably would have made Mike buy a new engine. You know, they would have, you know, jumped around and who knows. But it, it's just turning into a real cluster. It really is. So I got to take this little girl here. Let's pull this pack car in here. Dump the water. Hey, wild woman. Hey. I got to get this wild woman here. Get over here, you wild thing. Get over here. Come here. Come here, Josie. Come on, babe. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on, you. Come here. Get over here. Come on. All right, so let's go get in this other pack our pile of poo and pull it in here and dump the water on it. I know. So I guess the first thing we'll do is hit the laptop to it just in case my thought is just in case I have to Fix something like a wiring harness or something that I have to remove a coolant hose to get to it. I mean you never know on these things um, oh, Hey
Okay, let me get my uh, get my laptop hooked up to this pile. Let's see what we got. The thermostat housing should be right over here on this thing. What's all is it going to? It doesn't. Yeah, you got to take this thing off of there. But the harness is right over the top of it. I think a guy can get it weaseled out of there, but we'll have to dump enough water to get down to this level. I don't think we need to dump it all, but uh, let's hook up the laptop to it. It looks like the same piece of shit that's out there in that white Peterbilt. Same junky pile of shit. Pack our engine. Yeah, some guy, some guy got on the comment section. He says. Leave the truck mechanics to the truck mechanics. You're just a backyard wrench. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, it's laughable. It's laughable. I just, I don't even argue with these guys on the comment section anymore. I just, bam, remove the comment and block them. Boom, you're gone. Bye-bye, moron. Hi, Dukas. Dukas likes to sit in the truck. We will not waste our time conversing with shitheads. A long one. Oh, look at all these things here. You can't really talk until this thing gets done driving by. Nothing's active. Golly. Is it ever gonna end? Let's go into uh let's look at all the codes real quick. control modules in it you guys remember that really nice silver and red Peterbilt I did the outer frame rebuild in on the ISX CM 2350 he's already got hundred and fifty thousand miles on that engine we had to I'll show you here we <laughs> we had the whole bed off of it last weekend uh, Saturday and replaced all his u-bolts they got loose the boards get shrunken up they go between the bed and the frame and then the bolts get loose so and they wouldn't tighten up we heated them we were having a hell of a time he just got all the new u-bolts and then we put new cab suspension airbags on the back of the cab while we had the bed off i took a forklift on each side and what the hell huh oh you pile of shit let's try that again but uh anyway yeah, we got, what else did I do to that, to that thing? So I pulled the bed, um, put new U-bolts on it, but we put new cab suspension on it, new shock, new airbags, and then the flex pipe, five inch flex that runs between the stacks was broke on it too, so we replaced that. But anyways, um, I took the both those engines to the machine shop, or to, I sent them to to um, oh I don't I have them I take them to a, a buddy shop there in town in Klamath because the uh, the truck lines like Peninsula truck lines or Redaway or whoever they pull them forty foot pup trailers they can come in there and pick them up a lot easier there than they can at my house my heart my house is kind of hard to get in and out of. I dropped them off two days ago, and my buddy called me and said, Hey, you know, those are still sitting here. Okay, so, so they haven't picked them up yet for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on there. But 
So we got, see, these are not available as a control module, but these are. So we've got codes in all these here, so we can go like that. And like I was saying, we've got all these codes that are amber. That means they're not active. What are we doing here? I don't want to do that. I want to do that. Gateway control. Continental VDO CAD 3 electronic control unit pack car protocol left trailer direction indicator left trailer direction indicator sounds like there's probably something going on with the turn signal type stuff and then we got all the same codes basically that are in the uh, that are in there are in the that are in the ECU that are going to be in the uh, SCR DPF after treatment system system too. Um, so I told him the other day, I said, yeah, you don't want to run those emissions engines very much with the coolant not warming up because I said it won't do the regen right, or if it does it at all. Engine coolant temperature does not match to engine operating conditions. DPF regeneration completed but insufficient. Engine oil temperature data erratic, intermittent or incorrect, not changing during engine warm up. I think all this stuff here is going to be related to our, uh, but I do remember, so we can probably, PTO fuel used message, I'm not really, uh, that's that's in that controller, i do not not too worried about that one, I'm worried about this. So he's got something going on with the coolant level situation. I need to see if these are circuit codes, are these level codes, what are they here? Turn on ignition, yeah, it is on. I remember I scanned this thing a while ago and it had these coolant level codes in it. Uh, so yeah, we've got to get rid of, we got to get the thermostats in it. Most of it's, so I think the biggest thing we've got is this coolant level problem. Uh, let's go double click that, see what the number is. So coolant level data valid, but below normal range. Low normal range, okay. Sounds like a, he said it's always full though, so probably just a bad coolant level sensor, I'm, I'm guessing. We can verify the wiring. Let's go see what this one here is. So now you're seeing what the problem is. You couldn't level short circuit to ground or voltage too low. So the sensor's probably shorting out on it. So, uh, all right. So we probably need a coolant level sensor. All right. Okay, so let's uh, let's do the thermostat job, and let's go ahead and I'm going to take a well. I can, I'm going to save these codes, and then I'm going to erase them, um, and then we're going to do a force regen, all that good stuff after we do the thermostats. So that pretty much tells you right there that the thermostat stuck open. I pulled this off, and usually if the thermostats are closed on a cold engine, with this engine's cold, uh yeah, they should, they should, uh, there should be water standing clear to the top, but there is no water there, so, so now we got to get this wiring harness loose, I'm thinking maybe we'll unplug that, and then get a bracket here and an ear here, see if we can get this harness loose enough to get it kind of out of our way. I've been from Maine to Spain to Spokane, two world's fairs, and a one-legged man ass kicking contest, and I ain't never seen no shit like this before. Slack in her now? I don't know. 
Probably not, huh? There's another bracket down here we could pull off. Did that change much? Not a whole lot. Ah. That going clear through? Is that just a ear holding that on? I don't know for sure on that. Yeah, we're putting a new thermostat in it, you know. So if you're putting a new thermostat and you got the coolant system open there, change the water pump too. I'm waiting to hear that stupid fucking shit. I'm waiting to hear that from all the parts changers that are on the internet. Who puts on a new thermostat and didn't change the water pump and all the hoses and every fucking thing associated with the cooling system? Of course, we're real good at spending everybody else's money. All right, so we got everything. All right. There's our thermostats, okay. They do have different part numbers. There's one seal right here, which is gonna go back in. I got a new O-ring for that. So I don't know, let's see here. Yeah, you can definitely tell this one here is stuck open, which would create the problem that we are having. Now she was telling me on the phone, the parts gal, that they used to be the part, same part number, but they've changed part numbers now. So, I don't know for certain what we're going to get into here. I might have to call those guys and clarify which one do you want me to put where, or get in the service manual. We don't want to, to put one in the wrong spot. Well, that didn't clamp it down. I'm afraid it clamped that damn aluminum housing very tight. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. We've got two different thermostats here. They probably look identical. We'll have to get on the horn and find out which one they want where. See if there's a degree reading or something on the. Sometimes there'll be a high and low thermostat on them. There's a part number on that one. Hmm. I mean, it looks the same as that one. It's made in France. Yeah, this one's stuck open. The springs, <clears throat> I don't know how to explain it to you, but see what the spring is on this one here? Both of them are stuck open. You know what? Both of these are stuck open. Both thermostats are stuck open. Yeah. So this one came out of the left side over here. Keep track of that one. Maybe this is here. Yeah, this is the one that's the problem. See how the opening here is? So I was wrong. This one's, this one's stuck open. Okay. 
So I see both of these thermostats were 87 degrees Celsius is what they opened at. Um, as you can see, that one's stuck open. This one's 85 degrees. This one's 91 degrees Celsius. So I put the 85 degrees one here because it's going to be the first one to see the water and then open up. And as the requirements for the engine, if it gets hotter and the engine temperature starts climbing and the uh, 91 degrees Celsius one will open up to allow more flow through it. So anyway, um, I called Kenworth to verify that I was doing that right. So he said, yeah, you're right. So, okay. All right, so I got a new O-ring right here. As you can see, there's an O-ring right there. Okay, we're gonna tip this up and things gonna stay. Put her face in the right direction, huh? That wire and harness is kind of problematic. Okay, now I'll bolt this all back on and we'll have to put a vacuum on the cooling system and put the water back in it and then we'll fire it up and we'll let her get warmed up and uh, do a force free gen on it and then we'll address this coolant level sensor situation. Yeah, we're pulling a vacuum on it. That's right. On the bottom, little hose will curl up on you and suck air. So we're gonna fill back up and we'll fire it up and see what we got. Just sucking it in. Well, I would say we got our water. He said he never could get it over 150 degrees, even. Pulling the cat behind him, going up the hills, he said it couldn't get over 150. Ah, uh, we're approaching, what, 150, 150, 170, 180. He's holding there. Which is right for about 85 degrees Celsius. And we're at 926 degrees on the uh, inlet side of the DPF or the DOC actually so so far so good so me and my good looking co-pilot here that is a good looking co-pilot right there we're gonna go take this thing on a rough road we gotta go out here on the pavement first and loop back around the dirt apparently when you hit a washboarded dirt road and they drive it on there well maybe we'll just go this way it throws the check engine light on so there's something loose somewhere I took that coolant level sensor and collapsed the terminals on it with a pick I've seen those do that what the hell is this a oh shit never mind it's a 10 speed that's why I'm screwed up well, here we are on the rough road doesn't take long to find one of those what do you think, huh? What are we doing here? Somebody's been up here messing around on a car or a quad or something, spinning that donut. Looks like something I'd have done when I was a kid. No washboard road. No far so good. Somebody had it disabled. 
so yeah it's gonna it's not gonna she's not gonna do a regen if she got her disabled in the menu options there oh aren't you gonna go to sleep there are you babe well she sure is a damn good girl you can't go to sleep on that or i might need to shift pretty hard well so far so good drove it out there on that dirt road and Nothing came on back on yet. I don't know. What this time will tell, I guess. We'll see. We got the coolant temperature situation fixed, so she got to do her regens now, like she's supposed to. Yeah, these emissions engines, man, you got to have that coolant system working perfectly, or they will. The John Deere's won't even regen. They won't even let them let it happen. They won't even initiate it. I've had them where I've tried to, well, and I've initiated it with a laptop and never could get the regen temp to uh, act, you know, to initiate itself and start dosing because it wasn't seeing the coolant temp. Well, we got another Mayday call. We're going to look at a, huh, this trailer here. So last week, these guys, the, the, this, this outfit here, the, they used to have a pretty good guy driving truck for them. And Lonnie, he really kept after the maintenance. And he looked after stuff. And These guys, they got working for them now. I mean, they don't watch anything. So last week, they got a Briggs and Stratton on this low boy trailer. It's an equipment trailer. It's a, what do you call it, tilt bed trailer. Uh, I think it's a trail ease trailer or something, but anyways, the 13 horse Honda motor that runs the hydraulics on it underneath the tongue, they ran it out of oil and seized it up. So we got another engine, I went out and pulled the engine out of it, so it's got no engine in it right now, but he's been hauling plastic with it, well, it looks like to me, it sounds like to me they cammed the brake over now, it's sitting down here in this other yard, kind of be, kind of be, gonna be kind of awkward because this is the place where I used to work let's see if they kick my ass out of here when I pull in there with my truck uh, he told me to go down there and look at it yeah I see the truck sitting on the other side of the pole barn yeah this is uh, I worked here for what 10 or 11 years I think it was for this outfit strawberry nursery they own all this ground over here. I'll show you where I even used to live. In pine trees way over there. I used to live in that house for 10 years. Where my kids were mostly raised. But let's uh, we'll pull on in here. Must have jammed on the brakes and cammed them over or something. Let my dog 
smoked out here. These guys here drive like idiots. They'll run over them, roll the windows down, let them camp out here. Let's see, it would appear to be this tire right here, but yeah, they're dragging it. You can tell with these dragging this right rear. Let's look in here and see what we got. Oh yeah, yeah, it's cammed over. Yeah. Yeah, you cammed her over because there's got no lining left. What does that other one look like? It don't look too bad, but it appears to just be this break. The mothers look like they got plenty of lining left on them. Might get a little better look here from the back end. Ah. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's it's cammed over. It's what it is. Uh so I wonder if I can get this thing. Do I take it apart right here? Might as well, huh? Still gotta get it apart. Gotta get it cammed over the other way, so let's go release the brakes and then get the adjuster on it and see if we can just kinda turn it, keep going clockwise with it and go the rest of the way and cam it the rest of the way over. Sometimes that works. Well, let's see. Huh. Well, it seems to me... What the hell? It seems like it's backing off. The slack adjuster seems to be backing off. Maybe not, huh? No, it's stuck. Yeah, it's pulling it apart right here, so let's see if we can go in a way and just pop it over, maybe. Gotta get the drum off or something. I don't know what we're gonna do here. It's usually seven sixteenths, but that don't seem like that wants to fit right on there. Well, I highly doubt it. We'll try it.
might be able to hit it with a sledgehammer and get it to pop loose, I don't know. We can hit it with a sledgehammer and get it to come loose. stuck on there cammed over like a big dog huh let me see what gonna do with this thing alright finally got enough tension on it about the best I can get a block out of this thing Finally got enough tension on it and hit it about four times as hard as I could with a sledgehammer on the drum and it popped loose. I mean, these trailers here can be so difficult just to get to anything on them. I'll keep backing off now. ever even worked on this trailer since he bought it brand new. I'm probably the last one to put brakes on it. It's been a long time ago. These ISXs, you shouldn't really even need to use the brakes much. This one over here is into the rivets. Okay, we'll back her off some more to get the S cam on the pockets there. the S can, S can. They haven't seen a grease gun since the last supper. I heard that grease gun tickle their hands too much. They can't hold on to them. So they're here, but these guys here that are running this. Now the owners are good people. They've got so many eyes in the fire they can't keep track of all of this. 
anymore and are just overwhelmed with all the shit that's going on. So they just had to do what they can. Okay, I think we're there. Ah. <clears throat> oh, come on. Who is fighting me today? Get your money's worth out of those. These has cam bushings in it, but I'll probably get some brake shoes on there and color good enough for now. Let's get a light and look at the other ones real close. See if it, see how many sets of shoes it needs. Well, guys, me and my number one girl here. shoes we're gonna run back just the next day I had a 8.3 C series of the caps pump uh, well, basically my customer bought this old Klamath County school bus at an auction well, he wants the engine and transmission out of it to uh, to uh, put in his hay squeeze he's got kind of a road runner hay squeeze type setup or something I think so uh, anyway so he bought it when he bought it the turbo was out of it and uh, I pulled the turbo got another turbo coming and the uh, charge air cooler was full of oil and then it had leaks on it and I had the radiator shop he fixed it good enough to get it over the hill so I put the turbo and the charge air cooler because we couldn't get one nobody can find one right now for that because it's for that bus that's a 2000 model bus and you're not gonna you're not gonna find one right now so anyway he uh we got that done got it spent this morning working on that so i'm gonna head down here to get this trailer they need it pretty bad hauling plastic bales out of the field throw these brakes back on there and adjust the brake I think I'll go ahead and adjust the other brakes that are on the trailer while I'm there
make any sense to me. Whatever.
head back and find something else to do.